Welcome back everybody. Amongst the sound of the geese out here on the lake, we are gonna be discussing three different news stories that have broken within the last 48 hours, how they impact gun owners, and then potentially how they could impact gun owners in the future. Um, I've seen some folks report on these stories individually, but I think they're all related, and I will make my case for that uh, as we go along in the video. All three articles that I'm going to cite here in this video will be down below in the video description for you guys to read and research on your own, but they are out there for folks to consume. So basically the first story that we're gonna talk about here has to do with Bank of America. Long story short, they gave a trove of information to the FBI that concerned a couple of things. Number one, if anybody had made a purchase of a firearm with a Bank of America credit card or debit card since the 90s, uh, they didn't say why that was since the 90s, but my guess is that's when they just started digitally tracking stuff. But essentially, if you are a user of a Bank of America issued, so obviously it could be under a ton of different brands, different labels, but Bank of America was the actual company that was backing that credit card or debit card. If you made a purchase of a firearm and then you made a purchase with any other Bank of America credit card within a 30 mile radius of Washington, D.C., on uh, January 5th or 6th, if you met that category, they gave your name and your information to the FBI and presumably the ATF as well, simply because the ATF is the one that maintains a lot of these records. Um, so that information was given voluntarily as per the FBI, who are the ones that are making this claim. And it also says that you know no warrant was given uh, by the FBI to Bank of America. Bank of America just simply gave this information to the FBI. So we kind of have to think of why would they do that, right? Like it's not any other category of purchase. So if you purchase say like a sports car uh, with your Bank of America credit card, then you made a purchase within 30 miles of January, uh, of DC rather on January 5th or January 6th, they didn't correlate that information. So why are they correlating firearms? I mean, we all know why, right? To put you on a list. And that's exactly what they did. And uh, obviously that type of list is something most folks don't want to be on, but surely this, if you just kind of do the math on this, this is thousands of people. Bank of America is one of the largest banks, if not the largest bank in America. And obviously their subsidiaries issue a ton of credit cards as well as debit cards. So that list has to be huge. Um, so that information was given. And then additionally, we will get down here to our second one here, talking about gun merchant category, merchant category codes that are specific to guns, if you will. I did a video on this about six months ago saying that credit card companies were moving to a gun merchant category code or a MCC, you'll see it be referred to as, uh, that is specifically for firearms purchases. And the way they were gonna do that was a little bit weird, but basically it had to do with the type of store you were shopping at and how they're going to label them. But um, what has happened is due to all of you guys um, being outraged by this and talking to your state reps and your federal reps, there have been a number of bills and pieces of legislation put forward to ban this in multiple states. Uh, last I saw it was 15 states, but that number could vary. Um, so that what that did was it caused the credit card companies to have issues in terms of implementing this new merchant category code. Now, why would they have a merchant category code to track firearms purchases? Well, because of the first story. So obviously the way they had to do it in terms of did you purchase a firearm using your debit card, they very likely did it by like sporting good purchases within a price point category range, right? Because it didn't actually say that it was a firearm on your actual credit card statement. So what they're trying to do here with these new merchant category codes, and mind you, this has been do being done since the 90s. What they tried to do here with these merchant category codes was to make that more specific so that way they have better information on what you're actually purchasing in terms of firearms as well as ammunition with the merchant category code. Um, but again, because people got active after people like myself and others made videos, there was legislation put forward in 15 states and that I know of could be more. And the companies have all now, uh, starting on Thursday, started to retract uh, their plans to make these new merchant category codes. But a key point is that they haven't actually stopped them. They haven't said they won't implement them. They've all made a version of a statement that has to do with pausing them, meaning they're not going to implement them now. These were all stated, slated rather, excuse me, to go into effect on Monday. And as of right now, that is not going to be the case. Again, as of when I'm actually saying this, just to kind of quote the article here real quick, multiple U.S. states are considering legislation to prohibit or restrict the use of the new merchant category codes for gun and ammunition stores, a Visa spokesperson said. 
There is now significant confusion and legal uncertainty in the payments ecosystem and the state actions disrupt the intent of global standards. It's in their own email. Accordingly, Visa is pausing implementation of the MCC. Now it goes through in the article, all the different companies that are doing this as well. It's not just Visa. And again, they're all making a statement that is very similar along the line of this word here, paused. I don't know how well you guys can actually see this. Sometimes it's weird with the reflection, but this is just to kind of keep me on track. So again, first off, we have Bank of America giving all that information as per the FBI. And then the last thing that folks in the gun space really haven't talked about, but I think it's important, obviously it doesn't just impact guns, that, that should be clear when we get into this here in a second, but it very easily could be used to impact guns. So, um, as of yesterday, I believe this one, we had this bill right here, uh, which was vetoed in South Dakota. So what was this bill? Well, essentially it was uh, House Bill 1193. And what it did was just to read it from the article so you guys can see this. By defining money in this proposed way, House Bill 1193 opens the door to the risk that the federal government could easily adopt a central bank digital currency, which will become the only viable digital currency. So what the bill basically did is two things. Number one, it said that within the state, you could not use digital currencies, the ones that we're familiar with, like Bitcoin and others um, that you guys, again, are familiar with that are openly traded on a lot of different apps and platforms, said the state could not use those, but that they could create their own state internal digital currency to use within the state. And they could use it for mandatory purchases um, with things having to do with the government. That's essentially what it was doing. and. So if you kind of look into this bill and then all of these other two that we just talked about here, and I should mention that a version of this bill, uh, Bill 1193, is in over 20 state houses right now. So for those that don't know, uh, lobbyist groups for various organizations tend to write the same bills and the same bills with slight variations get introduced in multiple state houses at a time. That's kind of how this works. It's not just this bill, it's lots of other bills concerning all types of things. And so as of right now, there's at least 20 states that have a version of this bill in their state house or their state Senate. And if you look at what they're trying to do, obviously creating a digital currency, mandating it for certain types of purchases, well, it's not that hard to kind of see how that could be used to control people for various purposes, including gun purchases, right? So if you have these merchant category codes that say what gun, what a gun is, what ammunition is, and you can only use a digital form of payment, i.e. a credit card or a new state, and then perhaps federal digital currency, well, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that if those types of things are implemented, then it could very easily be turned off like that, where you're not able to use either a credit card or a mandatory you know, digital currency, mandatory use digital currency uh, to buy firearms, ammunition, or anything else, gas, whatever the case may be. So all three of these bills are related in my opinion. All of them should be concerning to gun owners and future gun owners. And as of right now, obviously in most states, you're still able to purchase a firearm via a private transaction with cash without any type of paperwork. Obviously there are exceptions to that by state, but most states in America that is still uh, legal for a private transfer. But any type of new gun that goes through a FFL still has to be on a 4473. But even with that, you have the option to use cash in every state as of right now. So that's probably a better option if you don't want to be tracked and be on these types of lists. Um, but again, you can see the progression that they're going through with these various steps. And it's just, uh, it's concerning, I guess we should say. Now, the good news is these last two here were stopped because of you being informed and being active, right? So um, obviously we can't do a whole lot about this, a private company, but certainly you could stop using Bank of America if you're already using Bank of America. I'm not saying that's what you should do. I'm not in the business of generating boycotts, but if that's what you choose to do because of this information and because of the actions of Bank of America, then it makes it less likely that other organizations are going to do so in the future. In this particular instance here, you can see that multiple states uh, within their house and their legislative bodies getting together and putting forward bills to prevent this type of thing happen literally made it so that it was going to be so difficult for the credit card companies to enact it that they paused it for now. But obviously more states doing so in the future will make it even more difficult for them to try to put these type of dystopian measures into place. 
And then again, as of right now, that bill in South Dakota was the first one of its type to actually make it to a governor's desk. But as I stated earlier, there's over 20 states. So if you guys want to go down and look at these articles, look at them and then figure out if it's in your state. If it is, let your legislators know that you do not want something that excludes private privately owned digital currencies and mandates publicly owned and publicly controlled digital currencies, it's probably not a good idea, right? Just kind of think that one through. If you like liberty, it's probably not your jam. I would probably avoid it and tell your legislators to prevent anything like that from being enacted where you live. If it's blocked at the state level, again, obviously it makes it harder to enact at the federal level. Everybody wins. There's more liberty. There's more civil rights and life is good. That's why I'm making this video, to try to push us towards that in the future and just alert people to what has already happened. And really, that's pretty much all I have for you guys. Just to keep it kind of quick and respect your time, we will kind of close the video out there. Again, all resources will be down below in the video description for you guys to reference, share with your friends, share this video with your friends, whatever the case may be, and let people know uh, these are not isolated news stories. They are all intertwined, at least in my opinion. If you guys have any questions, anything like that, you can always post those down below in the comment section. Um, you guys, I will be checking that over the first couple days that this video goes live, try to respond to you guys down there. Additionally, you can post those questions on my various social media platforms that you see here on your screen. Um, most of these stories have already been posted there. So if you guys want to be like the first to hear about this stuff, definitely follow me across my various social media platforms. Uh, the meta owned ones are very censored. Uh, so a lot of stuff doesn't get published there or even if it gets published, it gets taken down. So I recommend the others. Um, and then additionally, if you guys want to see daily deals on the stuff we normally talk about and the kind of stuff that is being tracked up here by the folks at Bank of America, you guys can sign up for my daily deals email at the website here on your screen. If you guys, or rather, if it is in the daily deals email, it is the cheapest I know of anywhere on the internet, whether it be guns, ammo, accessories, and there's six or eight deals. And again, if it's in there, it's the cheapest I know of anywhere on the internet, so that way it saves you guys some time, hopefully saves you some money as well. So you can sign up for that at the website on your screen. And then if you guys like this type of video, this type of information, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. If you think you have, just double check. A lot of people get unsubscribed. It happens. It's 2023 America and YouTube. So it is what it is. Um, um, but if you've done that and you're still not seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel, you can sign up for the email at this website here on your screen. This goes out once a month and it has all of the videos since the previous month's email. So that way you guys don't miss any of my content because it goes straight from me to you uh, via that email. I recommend not using Gmail for either of those. Gmail tends to block a lot of my emails. Uh, other web mail hosting uh, platforms seem to be a little bit better at it actually getting through. So that's it. That's all I have for you guys. Thank you all for watching. I truly appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing everybody in the next video.